Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. My name is Colleen Elber, and I am a product evangelist with Highland Software. We're the developers of the enterprise search product we're going to talk about today. Uh, I am from Cleveland, Ohio. So Colleen from Cleveland, and it's a little rainy here, but uh, that also makes it a little bit nicer, a little bit sweeter to be indoors, I suppose. I am the product evangelist for our enterprise search product, and evangelist is just a fun way of saying I get to talk about the software, how it might be able to work for you, answer questions that you have about the product that might, hopefully, lead to a solution for your organization. Uh, the lines have been muted just due to the, the volume of participants on the call and to minimize any background noise, but if you have any questions or would like to chat, make a comment, please use the GoToMeeting panel, type all of that in. Uh, I'll be responsive, as responsive as I can throughout the duration of the presentation. And we'll run about a little less than 30 minutes, but you're welcome to stay for as long or as little as you are able. We're happy you're here. And with that, I will get started. So every organization, uh, Highland Software, and I'm assuming you're not very different, faces the same daunting challenge and it's that answers, information, documents, content is hard to find. And unfortunately then that lack of visibility keeps staff from making the most informed decisions. I can't be the most effective employee if I'm spending my time looking for stuff instead of just getting my work done. Instead, the most effective processes and decisions are fueled by the most relevant content. But why is locating information still such a challenge? Well, I think the first challenge is the breadth of information. You know, there are numerous file repositories, file drives, internal systems, file shares, devices that are both company and employee owned. And last but not least, there are hundreds, probably even thousands at this point, I'm not even sure, of different file formats that exist, many of which are proprietary you know, complicating the monitoring and all of this content. There is just more information than ever. The second reason that finding content is such a challenge is the sheer depth of it. So if the breadth is wide out to the side, the depth is like down deep, it's that vertical line. You know, we're talking about files, metadata, internal comments and annotations and notes that are part of that file, uh, files that are embedded in inside of other files. I'm sure many of you on the line have received an email where attached to that email is an MSG file, so another email, and then embedded in that email is an attachment. Maybe it's an Excel spreadsheet that has multiple workbooks, multiple tabs, things are copied and pasted, there's metadata, there's notes, some of the slide content in my PowerPoints is even off of the slide. So just the depth of content anymore is equally as insane and hard to control as the breath. And then lastly is the people. And I'm not talking about malicious behavior. I truly believe that people are good natured. They just want to do their jobs, but they also want to choose the easiest path to get work done. And so many of them are not information security or compliance experts. They don't take the time to read and comprehend complex security and privacy repositories. They're not double checking the documents they made to ensure that they removed all of those little ancillary internal notes. They're focused on the business and there's just a general lack of awareness with regard to policies, so they become difficult to enforce. My guess is that some of these challenges resonate with you. Many organizations have a data compliance strategy for the core business applications, but what about everything else? What about email? What about file shares? What about cloud repositories and devices? All of these are additional places that may contain sensitive information. And yes, I work for Highland Software and I still will sometimes laugh that it's like, I can't find it. You know, we've, we've all been there. And that's just because there are so many places, repositories, file formats, where things could be. Enterprise Search is the answer or the solution to that problem because it makes locating that key information simple, fast, easy, on demand. It's cloud-based, it's standalone. It's one tool that can search those multiple repositories that we just talked about, 
providing a unified result set. And I know the first thing you're asking is like, well, does that mean that whoever has access to enterprise search has access to absolutely everything? No, absolutely not. Of course, there might be a small handful of people in legal, compliance, IT that do have that type of overarching access. But for the typical user, they're only ever accessing what they would normally have access to. It's respecting the permissions of that in-place application and only presenting me with the list of content that I should be able to find. So questions to ponder, to think about, you know, do you have content that resides in more than one place? I'm guessing yes. And what are those places? Do you get requests for information that require intensive or expensive discovery? Think about the typical employee. How much time do you think they spend searching for information? Do you ever worry about confidential information being disclosed sheerly by mistake? Like, oh, I wish that attachment hadn't gone out. Do you have legacy systems that you'd love to retire? Most organizations that I talk to, they've got one or two that they would love to part ways with and forget paying maintenance on and stop worrying about upkeep, but they just can't because there's business critical information in there. And then lastly, does your organization make decisions on occasion with limited visibility to all of the information? And then what are those potential consequences? If you answered yes to any of these, then I hope you'll consider enterprise search. You probably have some of these at top of mind already, or you wouldn't be here. And I'm excited to share with you this product. It has been one of my most favorite in recent years. It has changed my life, not only as an evangelist, because it's so straightforward and fun to talk about, but also as a user, as an employee who is often looking for things. So let's start at the top with our product overview. You know, content without access is worthless. It doesn't matter if I have the document, the policy, the agreement, if I can't find it and reference it and use it in my business. Enterprise search is that single, straightforward, web-based application that allows you to search multiple repositories. You know, if you're looking for a dictionary definition, and as a rule, as an evangelist, I never start a presentation with a definition, at least not on the slide, but search is the practice of identifying and enabling specific content across the enterprise to be indexed, searched, and displayed to authorized users. What most of our customers love about enterprise search, and I recognize many, not all, but many of the names, uh, organization names of those of you on the line, what they love about enterprise search is that it is search, federated search, where the content stays in the originating application. It stays in place. So, you know, OnBase full text search, the content in order to be for it to be full text searchable by OnBase, it has to live in OnBase. With enterprise search, not only can it search OnBase and perceptive content and other ECM repositories, but it can also search everywhere else. Your shared drives, your mail servers, your cloud applications, your line of business systems, your core applications, the content stays in place. And the result set is unified without ever moving the content from its source application. So let's take a look at what the interface looks like. So this is just the default application. Of course, this can be completely customized. You can see we've put a little Highland up in ours. You could change that with your own logo. It's federated search across a variety of repositories and users can search individual source locations or they can search the entire collection to which they have access. You can review the results based on a timeline. You'll see up at the top, you know, that kind of like little orange hill. That is the distribution of the documents that have resulted in the search between two periods of time. And we can also further refine the search based on some of the auto classifications or the entity concepts that you'll notice on the right hand side. So I could continue to refine my search for medical leave by also looking for sick leave or maybe even more narrow service leave. If I'm in the service uh, and I'm also sick, then what documents would make sense for me to result? So we're seeing the list result with thumbnails. You can hover over the thumbnails and get the first couple pages without actually opening the document. Those gold stars give an indicator as to how relevant this document is based on the search criteria. And it takes into account 
any other filters or classifications that you've added. You'll notice for our first document, we've got 147 hits. You'll also notice that it's a Word document. So this is, and in, in a typical scenario would require Microsoft Word to open, but not, I'll repeat that, but not with enterprise search. You can view the hit highlighted content. We actually render it in high definition HTML5, eliminating additional third-party software requirements. And it's interactive in that the user can navigate between the hits, navigate between documents, and even download the document if they want to. And you'll notice here there we can also provide a, a quick conversion. So it started as an, a doc. I can convert it to a PDF or a TIFF image and then do something with it so it's also actionable. The advanced search is similar but it's a, just a simpler way to build a refined and relevant query. So this is where you'll think of all your standard full text search type terminology, Boolean, thesaurus, this, but not that, with the words, without these words, at least one of these words. So it just allows you to further dive into uh, the content. So instead of you know hundreds of results, you're getting to the 10 top most relevant. And here's some more advanced searching capabilities. This allows you to build a query, and it also provides the ability for you to build an expression, which you'll notice here when you're not looking for something as static or straightforward. So I could search, certainly type in a social security number, that exact number and set of characters, but what if I wanna search all of my content for any social security number, embedded in any of my content because it shouldn't be there. Well, then I can build this little expression where I'm looking for a certain number of characters with the dashes to find any social security number. And you can build this type of query for any type of content. You may have an account number or a customer number within your organization that you also don't want in plain text in some of your content. You could build that same expression here. And then lastly, here's where it gets exciting, subscribe to that search. So whenever a new piece of content is indexed into enterprise search, it says, oh, wait, we shouldn't have that in here. And an administrator could get an email saying, hey, maybe take a look at this document. There is potentially a social security number in here. So you can create those custom email templates as well. Here's another uh, interface. This is what we call our experience interface. It provides, and this is all included under the one enterprise search umbrella, however flavor you wanna implement. It provides predictive searching. So as I begin to type medical, it's presenting to me based on what I have access to and what it has in the system. So following medical, most of the documents maybe are followed by certificate. So it gives that suggested queries in the collection. This is just another look at a similar screen than we saw before, you still see the timeline. Here, instead of the thumbnails, we have an embedded viewer. You can take one of our default interfaces or you can build your own because these components can kind of be moved around and you can decide how you wanna lay it out for your organization. And I've seen everything from the API being used. I don't want your interfaces at all, Highland. I'm gonna use this API for some other solution to just spinning up that default interface. We see the classifications on the left, the ability to refine, all across the top are different views, the ability to flag, to favorite, to export the results set, to view the metadata, it's all here, right within this interface. And this is completely responsive. So you could have enterprise search in your pocket, on your phone, with all the same result filters, highlighted display, and so on. So it's all mobile friendly with responsive design. And then the question I'll typically get is, okay, I found the document, what can I do with it? Because I'm typically not just finding it to take a peek, but I need that document or it has sensitive information and I wanna do something with it. Well, depending on what you're looking to do, we've got a lot of options. You can access that original, we'll, we'll link you to where it's located. We can generate a results report. Maybe you're doing some discovery, everything that you have related to an entity. We can export the results, flag them, convert them. If you are a content user, we can submit that directly to Workflow. So if you have any questions for me right now, I'll take a pause. Would love for you to type those in. In the meantime, I'll keep moving forward. But please, 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 I am here and would love 
to answer some of your questions, makes it a little more interactive for all of us. So we have hundreds of customers using enterprise search. And here's just a, an indication as to the industry breakdown. I know many of you fall within the government sector. That's where we see the biggest population of customers using enterprise search. Uh, as a result, that's certainly where my best case studies are from, but we see this in legal, in retail, insurance, finance, all the way down the line. I mean, every organization has this need for an in-place federated search utility to find content. So three examples that I'll talk about today. The first is law enforcement. The second is public records, where someone internally is doing the search. So this is really just any request management. And then the second is, a publicly facing constituent self-service scenario. And we have customers that fall into each of these categories. So first we'll talk about law enforcement. And this was a, a really interesting use case. Uh, a major metropolitan area, uh, over half a million residents, millions of visitors. I can't say their name, but you've definitely heard of the city and you've probably been there as well. We're using this in the case of stolen or lost property. I'm out for the night, I lose my diamond bracelet, I report that missing to local law enforcement. They wanna see if anyone is trying to sell that same bracelet. Was it stolen? <laughs> Was it lost? Is it now on Craigslist being sold? So they actually set up enterprise search, not only to search multiple repositories within the local law enforcement's you know, uh, jurisdiction, I would say, or within their own environment, but they also pointed this at Facebook Marketplace, at Craigslist. And then as they begin to search diamond bracelet, they're able to see like, hmm, there's that same diamond bracelet that was reported uh, missing or stolen or lost. Maybe there's a correlation and it aided in their investigation. So it enabled ultimately criminal investigators to provide key decision-making information that was positively impacting the safety of residents, constituents, visitors, and it, it truly helped that organization because they had multiple systems themselves. Plus then there was also this need to search outside of their four walls and enterprise search proved invaluable. The next example is public records. And here we'll take the internal approach. The record request comes in from outside, of course, but it's an internal employee that has to fulfill this records request. So if they want all emails sent from A to B or anything related to X, Y, Z or meeting minutes or agendas or anything related to, you know, the new superstore that's gonna be put on the corner of Detroit and Woodward in Lakewood, I want anything related to that new superstore that internal user can use enterprise search to search multiple repositories, package up all of the documents and ultimately fulfill the records request. We also have this same vehicle, but for constituent self-service where the constituent can actually use Highlands enterprise search. We embed our interface into their website so that they can provide the record search it's searching multiple repositories inside of the four walls where content has been deemed publicly accessible and they're able to serve themselves. And there's a couple examples of that whose names I can mention that I would like to share with you now. So the first is the Louisiana Supreme Court. And this is honest to God, their website. You can go to lasc.org right now and play with this yourself. You'll see the search bar and the go, and I'll search simply for the word jazz. It is Louisiana after all. And I can now see, this is very similar. It's custom for the way they've embedded it into their site. You can see their logo. You can see how it looks like, and it is really a Louisiana Supreme Court's website, but it's also enterprise search as part of the solution. The same capabilities still available. I can hover over the thumbnails. I see the gold stars, the number of hits. I can click on the document and bring it up. They're also taking advantage of our information map, which shows based on this search of jazz, all of the information that they have made available to the public and how it all relates to each other. How jazz relates back to the insurance company, 
I'm not personally sure, but maybe somebody who's diving in a little bit deeper will appreciate these relevancies and how the connections are brought to the forefront. Another customer who is using enterprise search embedded in their publicly facing website is the Ohio State Legislature. Again, you can go to legislature.idaho.gov right now and pull up this site. You'll see that little um, magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner. That's where the search utility takes place. You see that there highlighted and they've set this up a little bit different. So when you click on that magnifying glass, you see this search panel, you type in House Bill, 683 slightly different look and feel but you can tell it's still highlands enterprise search behind the scenes i can view the document here is that html5 rendering of the content doesn't matter what the original file format was it's all here you see the hit highlight and they allow you to print this out and now gone are the days of hmm, we all remembered passing of the legislation of the bill but we could not find it and that was an unofficial quote just in a conversation that i had with them uh, from the idaho state legislature so now as we kind of close out i want to show you a little bit about how this is set up because you know it it looks and works fantastically and when i was in your shoes I'd always be wondering, okay, but how easy is this really to set up? You know, what does it take? What does it look like behind the scenes? How technical do I need to be? Well, this is the administration council. So the, this user, of course, is typically someone in IT. They have access to these different repositories. We have different ways in which we connect to the content. Sometimes we do need to do the indexing where we do some OCR on machine printed images and translate that into machine readable text. In other cases, the content is already indexed in a way that we can use it within the originating application. So it all just really depends on what you're trying to search. But let's say we wanna build a simple index on a file share. So I've set up some sample folders that are full of documents and we wanna build a, a new index just on the file system. You can see here some of the different sources that we have. There's actually a list of all of our pre-built connectors and the way in which we interface with everything from SharePoint to OnBase to a file share. And I'll click clicking next. So we've got, this is where, this is the, um, the connection option. So this is my credential and it will enforce document level security to those that have access to this particular folder of documents. It takes just a little bit longer. It does you know, impact performance, but that high definition HTML makes the document look like the original Word file unlike the standard HTML, which looks like a generic web page. Good indexing speed, good viewing fidelity, but it doesn't necessarily look exactly like that original image or PDF. And we'll give the index a name. Here's the file system, Chuck's documents, and we click through. So this took, just so that you can see in terms of time, that's another question I'll sometimes get, well, how long does this indexing take? It's tough to know because all documents are different shapes and sizes. Do they need to be OCR? Do they not? Are they one page? Are they a hundred page? So here we can see that there were 56, about 650 documents that needed to be indexed. And it, it took about five minutes for it to index. And you can see in the list here where we see the files, here are the different files that were included in that Chuck's documents folder and some of the time that it took. So in total, it took about six to nine minutes and it shows us the one file that was skipped. An INI file isn't really something that we index. It will also skip, let's say, a password protected file. It doesn't know the password, it can't enter it. So if you're wondering why a document might be skipped, it could be anything from the file format to a password protected document, but it will indicate to the administrator those skipped documents. And once the index is created, then searches can be accepted. They may not just be questions, they could be terms, they could be phrases, whatever you're looking for. So Chuck might be looking for something from me. 
So he searches his repository for Elber, and uh, what do you know? A presentation that was given in the past on government solutions or an agenda that includes my name. He's got all kinds of random stuff in his file share. They all come up. We get the hit highlight. We see our names, it, that it's best to detect names. So Colleen Alber, Albert Product Evangelist, Scott Anderson are the different names that came up frequently. And then lastly, I'll round out with the content sources. So this is just a short list. It's not all inclusive, but these are popular interfaces that enterprise search will search. All right, so, so where do you go from here? If you are interested in more information, you're certainly uh, welcome to reach out to me, to your Navion account manager, your Highland account manager, if you happen to know them, but just some initial resources to get you started. If you wanna share this with someone else in your organization, and you're thinking to yourself, well, they're not on community. I don't want them to have, to, I don't wanna make it difficult. They don't, I don't want them to have to enter a password. Highland.com forward slash enterprise search is a great place to start. There's a short video showcases the software and the solution. If you are a government customer, there is a, a slick out there for you. If you're not, another great one is right to the left of it, the confidential information discovery. That talks a lot about the social security number scenario that I gave. If you are a, a registered community member, thank you, You've probably seen me out there. Uh, Enterprise Search has its own community page, lots of sessions, lots of demo videos. There's a great two minute enterprise search software video that you can download, view, share within your organization that gives a quick demo. Highly recommend. If you wanna play with this yourself, try.highland is the place to go. There is a, a VM that you can spin up. You don't have to download anything. You don't need any extra credentials with a scenario set up that you can play with and experience enterprise search for yourself. Um, I showcased both our default or web client as well as our experience client, which is the responsive client. So you can play with both of those two examples. It's all bundled together. These interfaces, the API, the administrative council, all of it is bundled into the single price tag for enterprise search. So there really aren't any, there aren't any licensing gotchas in this case. There's no extra client licenses. There's no extra for OCR. It's all included in the cost of enterprise search. A couple FAQs I get. What if you already own enterprise search? Great, because you'll need it to search on-base content. And if you already own on-base full text search, we actually give a discount on enterprise search. You're probably wondering, does it search my repository? We have a list of connectors that are available. If there's not a pre-built, most things are possible with the API. Who do you ask if you have questions? You can ask on community. We would love to hear from you. If you have enhancement ideas or just general inquiries, of course, your account manager. So we'll run out with this. Uh, I'm a bit of a search geek now, thanks to uh, being the evangelist for enterprise search. And there's a great book called Ambient Findability by Peter Morville that if you are also kind of a, in the search space, I would recommend as well. And it refers to search being both an art and a science, that because of the breadth and the depth of content, plus the people, search is not just search anymore. It's the art and science of making content easy to find. And that's our job as administrators, as business leaders, as IT professionals to be servants in a way to our employees and give them the tools they need to get their jobs done. The art refers to leveraging software that can you know, parse words, OCR, bring it all together. You know, The art is that interface that makes finding content easy to find. So if we look at the art column, that's the hit highlight, that's the navigation. And I'll equate this sometimes to a car. You know, like the art of a car is the fancy leather seats, the Bose sound system, the LCD display monitor. That is the art of this science and enterprise search has it. It's the intuitiveness, the hit highlight, the information map, the mobile friendly, the ability to flag documents. The science is that this tool supports 550 different file formats. The users don't know about it, but it's the HD rendering behind the scenes. It's the OCR, the natural language processing, the indexing, the categorization, the taxonomies, the entity classification, all of that stuff. You know, that is the science 
behind the scenes that we need. So think about whatever search tool you land on or how you build search within your organization. I invite you to think about both the art and the science of search. And the question that came in, uh, thank you so much for this, is can Highland Enterprise Search replace Splunk for searching log files? I I'm not overly familiar with Splunk other than, you know, I know it's almost like a SIEM application that will take log files from multiple repositories, put them together so that you can look for patterns, right, between the different log files. Boy, I see three or four invalid login attempts from this user in multiple places. I wonder if it's a bot or something we should look into. In, in terms of what other features Splunk has to allow you to find patterns within those log files, uh, I, I don't know enough to, to be able to make that comparison to enterprise search, but it is certainly possible that you could load the log files or have enterprise search be available to search those log files. So you, you keep them in their you know, native repository applications, file shares, wherever the log files exist based on the application. We could certainly point enterprise search at those locations and you could type in a word or phrase and it would search all of those log files and present them to you. So that almost reactive search capability is certainly available. If you wanna be more proactive about it, you're, you're having to proactively search on the regular. Splunk may have more capabilities that would allow you to look for patterns, alert you to suspicious activity. I, I'm not familiar enough with Splunk, I apologize, but it's certainly something worth looking into. So I definitely appreciate the question, James, and uh, thank you for, for bringing it up and asking it. Good question. And something to think about as we develop this product further. So I'll leave you with these three things. Enterprise Search provides a single tool to search multiple repositories. And we have hundreds of customers using it to provide and work with unified results, whether it's internally for their employees or externally for their constituents. So I think we ended pretty close to on time. I promised you 30 minutes, we are at 32. So thank you so much for your time and attention today. I know there is an overwhelming amount of information made available online and virtual webinars and meetings. So I appreciate you taking 30 minutes of your day and your time to learn a little bit more about enterprise search again.